NASA's Voyager 1, is some 14.6 billion miles from Earth, making it the furthest human-made object from our planet, having made it beyond the edges of the solar system, and out into the interstellar medium. At such distances, things can go wrong with limited, to no human intervention to save the day. Add to that, the Voyagers are 45 years old now, having been launched in the 1970s. So when Voyager 1 started to send home some garbled nonsense, instead of telemetry data in May of this year, NASA started working on a remote diagnosis and fix. Now, some four months later, they are triumphant. Voyager 1 is back online and communicating perfectly, with ground control as if it never happened. In fact, the fix turned out to be relatively simple for NASA, sitting billions of miles away from the spacecraft. But, the spacecraft has come back online with a new mystery. Welcome to you curious? Discover more, no more. In mid-May, Voyager 1's onboard system, responsible for keeping its high-gain antenna pointed at Earth, known as the Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, started beaming home confusing jumbles of data, instead of the usual reports about the spacecraft's health and status. From our viewpoint, it appeared as if the spacecraft had developed something like an electronic version of aphasia, a condition that causes the loss of fluent speech. The data may appear to be randomly generated, or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in, explained NASA in a statement from the time. Even more baffling for engineers, Voyager 1 appeared to be in perfect condition despite the spacecraft's bizarre status reports. The radio signal from the ship remained strong and steady, which meant the antenna was still pointed at Earth, and not in whatever configuration the AACS was claiming it was in to NASA in the reports. Similarly, Voyager 1 science systems kept gathering and transmitting data as usual, without any of the same strangeness affecting the AACS. And, whatever was wrong with the AACS, didn't trip a fault protection system designed to put the spacecraft in safe mode, when there's a glitch. Thankfully, NASA engineers diagnosed the problem. And with the diagnosis, they could employ a cure. It turned out that the AACS had started sending its telemetry data, via an onboard computer that had stopped working years ago. The dead computer corrupted all the outgoing data. All NASA engineers had to do was send the command to the AACS, to use the correct computer to send its data home. The next challenge will be to figure out exactly what caused the AACS to switch computers in the first place. NASA says the system probably received a faulty command from another onboard computer. While they say it is not a major concern for Voyager 1's well-being right now, the true culprit will need to be found and fixed, to prevent future weirdness. For the last decade, Voyager 1 has been cruising in interstellar space, beyond the reach of our sun's magnetic field. The field had offered the craft a little protection from cosmic rays, and other interstellar radiation, much as Earth's magnetic field offers some protection from high-energy particles and radiation from the sun. Cosmic rays are known to interfere with electronics here on Earth, when one of those high-speed energetic particles strikes a computer chip, it can cause small memory errors, which add up over time, and it's reasonable to expect that to be an issue for Voyager 1's onboard computers too. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission, said Voyager 1 and 2 project manager, Suzanne Dodd, in a statement dated to May. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. We're also in interstellar space, a high radiation environment that no spacecraft have flown in before. We'll need to wait and see what new perils encounter Voyager next on its travels, and what new discoveries await. For now, it remains a mystery as to what caused the AACS to switch computers. NASA is working on it, and hopefully we will have an answer soon. Looking back, it's been 45 years, since NASA's Voyager spacecrafts blasted off from Earth, but the twin explorers still call home, from billions of miles away. We do the hello, 
Are you okay call, once a week, said Suzanne. The check-ins give Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, a chance to share their exact locations on the other side of the heliosphere, a distant region of the solar system whose magnetic field shields Earth, and the other planets from galactic cosmic rays. It was during one of these calls in May, that Voyager 1 sent a perplexing signal. Data from the computer that controls its orientation came back in jumbled bits, jumbled ones and zeros, and it continued to look like gibberish. It's like the check engine light turned on, added Bruce Wagoner, a JPA engineer, who oversees the operations of the Voyager missions. We could not isolate it to a specific area. This computer is critical, because it keeps Voyager 1's communication antenna pointed firmly in Earth's direction. Any malfunction or loss of power would cut off humanity's longest distance phone call forever. Voyager 1 is now so far away that it takes almost 22 hours for transmissions from the craft to reach us, traveling at the speed of light. They're worth waiting for. The dispatches include valuable scientific data about interstellar magnetic fields, cosmic rays and plasma waves. Transmissions from the Voyagers are received by the Deep Space Network, a trio of colossal radio antennas in California's Mojave Desert, Australia, and Spain. They're spread out across the globe, to ensure at least one of them can be aimed at any point in the sky. All three sites have a 230-foot antenna, built specifically to listen to the Voyagers. The farther they go, the harder they are to hear. The Voyager's radios transmit signals at a mere 23 watts of power. By the time those signals reach Earth, they're reduced to the faintest of whispers, just one billionth of a watt. The spacecraft are getting weaker too. Every year their batteries lose up to 4 watts of power, due to the decay of plutonium-238, the radioisotope that fuels them. Solar energy isn't an option, because the sun is so far away. Survival is a series of trade-offs. With a finite source of energy, what can be sacrificed and what can be preserved? And as for the sudden hijack of its computers, why Voyager 1 made the switch in the first place is still a mystery, and one worth solving, since it suggests something else isn't quite right, aboard the spacecraft. What do you guys have to say? Drop in your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to you curious? Discover more? No more.